Good evening. Welcome to Tuesday, July 12th, 2022, regular selectmen's meeting. There's um, four of the selectmen are here. Mark Pendergast was supposed to be joining us on Zoom, but he's not here yet. Um, we have our town clerk on Zoom, and we have our town recreation director on Zoom waiting in the wings. There's, uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have to say, with uh, nobody on Zoom yeah. coming in loud and clear, it's, that five-second delay it always throws me off in saying the pledge. Um, let's see, we don't have Lisa Vargas up there yet. All right, we have uh, approval of meeting minutes. We have a June 15th meeting. I will make a motion to approve the minutes from June 15th. Second. We have a motion and a second. And I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Mike? Yes. And myself is a yes. Is Linda, you were absent Upstairs, on that one. Yes. And then we have a uh, Tuesday, June 28th, 2022 meeting minutes. I move that we accept the minutes as presented. A second. Is, uh, actually, I guess I don't have to go through the roll. We can do it by show of hands. Yeah, Everybody's sure. Everybody's here. All those in favor? And I will abstain since I was not there. Lisa is here. And, Lisa uh, and there's Lisa Vargas. We've been asked to uh, do things a little out of order. Um, is our... Finance director is on Zoom with us. Is she wants to go over a request for transfer of money to the town hall account? Lisa, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay. Good. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is vote to transfer thirty-one thousand dollars from the general government uh, account to the town hall account, and that's additional money for the sewer lining at the town hall. And, and that was one of the uh, unexpected expenses we had over the past year. Yes. It, uh, we actually, if we hadn't had to have that done, we would have had 16000 left over in the town hall account. But because of that, that bill was $57,165. We were over by about 40000 a little more than maybe 41000 so we did like ten, about 10,000 from Lena Clark, which was the spendable cash in there, and we need an additional 31. And for those who don't know, is what we had was a problem with the sewers backing up from the restrooms, and we had a, a scope put down it, and it was discovered that the sewer lines, which were original to 1938, had started collapsing in on themselves and clogging it, so we had to uh, clean them all out and reline them all. So, um, any questions for Lisa on that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do we have a motion? I move that we transfer $31,000 from the general account into the town hall account. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's four yes. All right. I have one more. Yep. Go ahead. Um, um, we need to move... Uh, $5,600 from recreation budget to recreation special revenue for an over expenditure in the budget. And it's the special revenue fund is the money that we take in for all of the registration fees, which we, the people have already voted on that we can actually do that. But the auditors always recommend that we have the board vote on these things and don't just do it. Lisa, can you explain that part of that money is also from the grant that we received? So it will be getting dumped back into that special revenue account. I think you just explained it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> well, any questions? What's the 5600 for? Is it? Um, it was just after all of the bills were paid for fiscal 2022, which was we actually 
finish today. And we journaled all of the, we had to journal accrued payroll, which is the last four days of June, um, back into, into fiscal 22. And by the time all of that was done, we were $5,600 overexpended. Okay. So you're just trying to balance out end of the year. Right. Right. Okay. All right. That's fine. Right. Any further questions? If not, we'll look for a motion. I move that we transfer $5,600 from the uh, recreation account into the special recreation account. That's correct, right? Yes. Special revenue fund. Special revenue fund. Special there revenue we go. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Well, yes. Anything else, Lisa? That's it. All right. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you very much. Have a good Thanks. evening. Bye-bye. You too. All right. So we'll take that off of that. That's been taken care of. All right. Back to our regular first public comment. And prior for public comment, please step to the podium. Name and address. Good evening. Uh, Jim Dunaway, Two Morning Dove Court here in Berwick, obviously. I have a couple of questions, uh, primarily for the rec director, but I wanted to put this before all of you guys. Uh, really, it pertains to the maintenance at the rec field. Um, I think it's really no surprise that this question has been raised several times, but I felt like we should put it on record and come down here and do this the right way. So, uh, first and foremost, I, I know we have a trash problem. I know for a while we were missing trash cans, then the trash cans were there, there's trash on the field. Uh, I'm a parent of a child in town. I'm not the only one that's noticed this. So my question basically, at least the first question is, who's in charge of the trash removal? And in what time interval is it being done? Is it frequently enough? Are trash barrels being emptied nightly so as to reduce a possible food source for rodents? That is the first question, if you guys want to answer. Uh, well, it typ typically we'll listen to you, all your I have comments. And, questions. Yeah. I questions. I think it would be better to answer them. Well, it's not, it's not the way this works, unfortunately. Okay. It's, it's a public comment. It's for you to tell us what your feelings are and what you, what's going on. Okay. It's not a question and answer, period. And, so uh, we, will, we will address these questions, trust okay, me. Great. So that brings me to rodent issues. Uh, I'm under the impression that we have rodent issues at the field house. I don't know to what extent, <clears> but that's what the, I guess, rumor is. I don't know it to be fact yet. Um, but my question there is, what's being done to remedy or remediate the rodent problem at the field house? Uh, and how long has it been occurring for? And further, is the trash problem related to the rodent problem? Uh, from there, we get into field issues. Uh, I feel as though the field maintenance, I and several parents, probably most of them, feel as though field maintenance is lacking. There's grass in the infield baselines and the newly developed field usage fee I'm hoping is being used to maintain the fields in a proper manner, but it doesn't seem to be uh, effective. From there, I'm curious uh, what the rec department is doing in terms of deterring vandalism and littering. Do the existing cameras work? So my impression is that there's probably some kids hanging out at the rec field that might be taking these trash cans and dumping it on the ground. I don't think it's the users at the rec field leaving trash around. I mean, I can't speak for all the parents, but I know a great many of them are pretty conscientious of what they take in and what they take out, and they put trash in the proper receptacles. Uh, and during the last meeting, you know, we talked about a sign, or I'm sorry, uh, the rec department director uh, spoke about a sign. I just, I'm not sure that's gonna be enough to deter or correct the larger problem. In fact, the sign might get vandalized. Um, so from there, uh, I'm just curious about what the board's opinion is of what has changed in the last two years that's caused these issues at the field. Further, and finally, uh, watching the last video of, of this meeting past, I did notice uh, there was some body language from the rec director that seemed as though she may be overwhelmed and seems to be struggling to manage and deploy her resources. Is she the right person for the job? I don't mean that to be an insult, just a direct question. Um, 
And then one last thing, is there a reason that the town is no longer providing shirts for the older kids at Adventure Camp? It seems to be a safety issue. I know we like to have our kids all in the same color so that the counselors can easy, easily identify them on field trips, et cetera. So sorry for uh, the bulk and large amount of questions, but I'm hoping to get some resolution to this so we can put these things to bed. Thank you. Thank you. And again, what was your name? I want to make sure I can get back to you. Jim Dunaway. And I'm going to follow this with an email to you and the yep. director tomorrow. <clears throat> I just wanted to come and make sure I got it on the public record. Yep. Um, I can answer your question about the rodents. The rodents have been an ongoing problem. Yep. As we started addressing that last year, it was the problem originated with food in the building okay. from the, from the uh, concession, concession stand. stand. And that's why that was shut down. And they have been, for more than a year, trying to address that problem. I, I do know the answer to that one. Great. So, and, and as far as the rec director being overwhelmed, she is. But everybody in yeah. Berwick is overwhelmed. Understood. So, I run a company myself. So is, uh, but it's all about managing your resources and make sure you deploy them correctly, right. in my mind. So. And further, you know, just to give this one last statement, in the definition of the rec department's job on <coughs> the Berwick, town page, uh, the first sentence is field maintenance, maintenance of current equipment. My fear is we're spending a lot of money on improvements to the field and we seem to have a difficult time managing our current infrastructure. So are we going to add, which I have no problem with spending the money and investing in our youth, but I want to make sure that as we add, we're making sure that we're maintaining our current assets. So that's my Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, any other public comments? Ooh, all right. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, we're cognizant of the problems ongoing with the rec department and what's going on down there. It's been a big change over the last couple of years, and, you know, we're try trying to bring the department up to the standards that we think Berwick deserves. And it, they're growing pains, as yeah, I will say it, that. They're in growing pains. I, and, you know, I and, just you know, we, if you look at the rec budgets is over the last several years, you can see there's been a huge increase in the budgets. So it shows that is in the salary for a new director. And, and so that shows that we are working towards trying to maintain that facility and improve the facility. I totally so, agree. I think the town so. is in it. My question really revolves around is the department being run properly. All right, is uh, we have no public hearing tonight, no reports of committees, is we have a department report from the Recreation Department, if you'd like to stay around and listen to that. We will. Is, um, <laughs> uh, is um, I, I see, Angela, that you have some backup with you. <laughs> I do. Um, so, th so thank you for bringing all your concerns um, to the table. Um, I really want to ex to explain the trash situation. Um, for the trash situation, every youth organization that utilizes our field is supposed to empty the trash after every use. That has not happened. Um, and because of that, um, we've, the, the director of public works and water and I have decided that because we're short staffed, we're not able to pick up all the other trash that we were gonna remove the trash cans and make it carry in, carry out. This was also discussed with the president of Noble Youth Baseball. And it was also discussed with other people um, along with Noble Youth Baseball too, to let everybody know that this was the situation and this was the direction that we were moving in. Um, so that is the carry in, carry out policy that we have established right now up until we can get it under control. Um, I understand that you guys think it's the vandalism, the kids up there, but honestly, it's been a lot of the youth sports organizations while they're up there. Um, and just, I get that the trash cans are heavy, um, but if they were emptied out after every use, we wouldn't have this issue. Um, so we had to instill this. And I understand that some people aren't happy with it, um, but it's it's where we're at right now. We have been making incredible progress um, with the field, and I know it doesn't look like it, um, but I did walk into 
a situation where the fields hadn't been maintained in 30 years. And you guys may think that that wasn't the case, but the irrigation system hadn't really been updated in a good chunk of time. Um, we have updated every irrigation head out there. We have changed the, the system to a Wi-Fi system. So I'm capable of utilizing the irrigation system from my phone. Um, and I also have Tom Irwin Associates and Advisories with me, as well as Luke Fernandez, who will be taking care of the baseball fields for us this year. And I also was giving, um, I also talked to Nick and his concern was with sports field and the lack of, um, the lack of work that they had done in the past. And I didn't want to spend the town's money again on something that wasn't working. Um, so I went and looked for a second opinion. And this is where we have Jack and we have Luke here on this call with us to explain what the situation is. So Luke and Jack, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, I'm Luke Fernandez, uh, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me here. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and um, for those of you uh, who I don't know, I graduated from Marshwood High School, uh, played my baseball at Boston College, um, and I am currently working for my father's landscaping company, Fernandez and Sons, and we are out of Elliott. My name is Jack Schmidgall. I'm design and construction advisor for Tom Earl and Advisors, and uh, I'm the person that coordinated the project to uh, rehab the fields over at, uh, um, it was supposed to be another company, I guess, that uh, has, has done it in the past, but they weren't available. So it was a bit late getting started. Um, Angela contacted me. I was able to resource Luke and I saw his work down at Winnick County in Hampton and was impressed and uh, asked him if he'd be interested in helping out. And um, quite interesting to find out that he already had a history with the uh, with the town of Berwick, who his dad had worked on the fields years ago. So it was a good match. Yeah, I've spent quite a lot of time at, at the Memorial Park. I played there a lot, um, coming up through from eight all the way through twelve. Um, I I helped my father rehab the field, or we did an update updated the field when uh, Marty McKenna was still involved with the program. Uh, this was before I graduated. Um, so I'm very familiar with the park and extremely, extremely excited that the town and Parks and Rec has decided to take this direction uh, to invest in the town, the kids, and what this community center could ultimately bring. We if, also there have any, more if, if there aren't any direct questions about the, the overall project, I'm happy to dive right in and give the, and give the overall scope of, of the work if, if that would be best. It, I think more than more than the overall scope of the work is how about timeline? That's what most people timeline. are probably so right interested now, in. I have, um, as of Monday, I began the work on field one, and by no later than Saturday do I project the completion of both fields. Uh, we are getting the infield mixed delivery uh, tomorrow, and that should wrap the completion of field one. And the reason we did this is so that anybody who needed to have a field, there would always be one available. So we didn't want to take up the entire complex at once. So at the completion of tomorrow, once field one is done, we will completely leave that area and then move over to the field closer to the new parking lot. You have a question, Noah? Or a no, I was gonna ask the exact same thing. Is like, is people just, you know, whenever I get a question about the, the field, usually it's, you know, when is stuff coming in? When is the new playground gonna be in? When is the new basketball court gonna be in? When is stuff, you know, cause they just see it as it is and you know sometimes they just can't get to where it's gonna be so mm -hmm. that's that's the major thing that people are going to ask is when so entirely i apologize uh, you uh, your name is nate noah noah i thank you noah. um so noah the better way to do something is to do it once rather than going back a million times and having to spend more money and more time uh the directive from um Jack and Angela and Ian was, we want to do this the right way once, establish a quality control program to make sure that we're not bleeding money and maintaining this because there are many ways to 
maintain a field to defer costs down the line. Um, Jack, Jack and Ian had a long, long history in doing this all over New England um, on beautiful, beautiful parks. But what this is, the, the memorial field, is it's more than just a baseball field. There is softball, there's soccer, basketball, football, and the community that's trying to utilize the space. Therefore, there's going to be a lot of moving parts and not only improving it, but also maintaining it. And that's a collective effort. So one of the things that I'm most excited about the opportunity with Angela is to meet and establish a connection with the different program heads underneath the Berwick Noble Memorial umbrella. Whoever's there should understand what goes into the care of the space. And the advantage that I have is I'm a town over. Um, I live in Rollinsford. I operate out of Elliott. So I'm 10 minutes away from being able to address concern at the field. There is also the un undertone of I've played on the field. I know what it's like to see a community flourish from their athletic departments. And I'm excited that that is the direction that you that you're hoping to take. Um, and I take a great deal of pride in that the community that I'm from is looking to push the direction of better and growing and turning into a uh, more than just a field that a town that has a field somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. This is going to be a place where not just young athletes are coming, but families are coming, members of the community are there, and it's designed to, to benefit all. Any other questions or comments? Not specifically for him. No. Um, it, one question I have is uh, the, the new system. Um, I'm assuming you're making it expandable because we are looking to have you no know, future fields and things like that, so. I'm sorry? We're, we're looking for, you know, is, is the system that you're installing now, is it capable of being added onto? Is it expandable to other fields? What I am uh, on the ground, what you, what you can actually see will be an updated version of the field. Jack and I were up there yesterday establishing the new lines the edges, the dimensions to make sure that everything is where it should be. From there, the quality control plan that I was referencing will be um, not in one block. I'm not going to show up once and then you're never going to see me again. It's meant to be an iterative relationship where as a need comes up, we arise with a solution. Um, it might be different year to year, but the overall goal is that every member of the borough community that is utilizing the fields understand what goes into maintaining it and it is well under control of of whomever it is that that is their task if it's baseball if it's football soccer t-ball anybody should know that once i am completed with my practice my game that whoever's coming in next is receiving a prepared a prepared space it shouldn't be a slow decline until the next project has to has to show up um, if I could reference one thing specifically, um, I don't know if the last time the town had to buy sod for the baseball field or an athletic field. Well, if you rake parallel, if you rake parallel with the edges, the dirt never goes onto the grass. If you rake perpendicular to an edge, then the dirt can easily go into an area that it shouldn't. And over the course of a near, a near window, it would be a much larger task to bring the field back to playable, safe, um, durable. And those are the goals because what, what can happen very easily is this can become a snowball of money. And that's not what we want. What we want, the, the ultimate goal, and I'm saying I, I apologize, we, is let's have a safe, high level facility for our community to be at. And um, that quality control, how that looks in action is what rake is used for what purpose with a label and a location. It always will be there and then everybody will know how to use it. And that is, again, the benefit of me being in the community. If I don't, if I'm not familiar with somebody, it's probably not too far away that I'll be able to make a connection with them. And what I thoroughly enjoy doing is teaching people the skills that they need to be able to monitor their space, how to mow the most effective way so that grass isn't going into the dirt, how to keep the dugouts clean, how to make it so that the town does not have to find more money for problems that were avoidable. You have general questions for Angela or somebody, Linda? 
Yeah, just, uh, well, or you, because you mentioned it, you responded in saying that uh, you've been dealing with the rodent issue in that building. Are we currently using that building? Um, the the concession stand, Angela, that's not being used, correct? No, it's not. We have to get clearance from MMA right now um, for liability purposes. Um, we have never had a full scope of liability stuff done for our building or our concession stand. Um, so is that in the works? It is. Okay. MMA has been very difficult um, to get a hold of. They've canceled on me twice already. Um, so it is in the works. Um, we're trying to figure that piece out. But the at this point right now, there, there are still rats up there. Um, they tend to come in along the irrigation line. Um, as Luke and Ian have seen. Um, and that's just where they end up burrowing. They burrow right underneath the building right there um, because it's it's got water there. Um, so that's the situation. As soon as I found out, we lost all of our stuff last year for summer camp. Everything that was in that building was, was a loss um, because of the, the rat issue. Um, so we pretty much started from scratch last year. So now we've had it cleaned out, um, our mowers in there. We have all of our needs are in there, which we're trying to establish as our facilities piece for that field. Um, and to just make sure that we have all the stuff that we need up there and we're building it one by one. And we've been able to do that um, because of last year because I came on in January, we had a chunk of money that needed to be spent or it was gonna be lost. And so we really looked at, well, I really looked at what we really needed to do for the whole scope of everything and stepping foot on that field and seeing how sad it was, it really needed an uplift. And so talk to um, Ian and everybody else and James and this was the direction that we were going to go in to see the bigger vision of that facility, like Luke has said. Yeah, and I think the field, and, and what I'm hearing about the field is good. I'm saying about that building. So we're now using the concession stand to house maintenance equipment. Is there any no, plan? No, the concession stand is a separate area. Okay. And so It's not being utilized right now? No. Okay. No. What no, is the plan to utilize it going forward? I will have to find out through MMA and what the liability insurance is on it. Okay. Okay. And I, um, I drove up there and is there not a dumpster near the parking lot? There should be two dumpsters. There should be okay. a dumpster at 71 and a dumpster at 25 Sweetser. Okay. So although there's not trash cans throughout the park, if someone carries in, they don't need to carry it back to their car. They can put it in the dumpster. The dumpsters are not locked, correct? No, they're not. No. Okay. And um, I am just curious about this question about, yeah. do we have cameras there? Are there cameras We there? do. We do have cameras there. Um, we were supposed to be on a static line with Comcast. Um, <laughs> the police department has 24-7 access to it. I unfortunately don't. Um, I have to log in to see the access there, but the police department can rewind and do all that stuff at the so Have they reported any vandalism or anything like that from outside people? They have not reported it to me. And that was, that's been something that has, hasn't been done in the past. So in the past, it hasn't been fully reported. Um, so that's something that I have to establish and that if stuff does happen up at the field, I, I do need to know about it um, since it falls under my department. Um, so that's that's another area that we need to address. Yeah, well, one, I'm glad that the cameras are working. For mm -hmm. And um, if the police are seeing any type of vandalism, whether it's where the trash is coming from, where the destruction is coming from, um, yeah. are the police at least addressing, maybe not reporting it to you, but are they addressing... Um, the people who are doing the vandalism. Uh, yeah, I'm just yeah, thinking. I guess my concern would be because if it's a juvenile, they can't 
they they can't. Have, they have to address it with, well, well with the parents, but what yeah. I'm thinking too is can we maybe have a conversation with the police chief because if they're catching kids on the camera destroying property, um, the town can work with them to do some community service to clean up what they're what their destruction. I mean, obviously, that would be something they'd have to talk to the police yeah. chief about. But um, there's a potential there if it's if it's occurring by you know outside people and not and not the people using the field. Um, so that was the questions I had. I wanted to know about the dumpster and the yeah. cameras. I'm glad the cameras are there. Any other questions for Angela about the field? How long have you guys been planning this? I know you had to wait till after July 1 before you implemented it for funding reasons. What are the next... Ian and I have been, Ian and I have been working together since, geez, I don't know, last February? Okay. Not this past February. It's been well over a year. Okay. And um, so in this budget, you got the funding, which was effective July 1, and he's up there now? Yeah. Once so he, Luke is up there right now. Yes, okay. and we have Luke. When did we meet? Sorry. When did we meet? In uh, April. In the end of April, beginning yeah. of May. Okay, so in the last couple months, and yeah. he's up there now. Okay, and what yeah. is the next step? Uh, he's going to maintain the fields. Then he's going to, which I think is great. He's going to work with um, the individual leagues to help them understand. How to maintain it after they're using yep. it what's the next step in the fields is it a playground is it a basketball court what is the next step yeah, right now the next step is i am meeting with pave tech on thursday okay. um we've been waiting to to meet with pave tech because they're willing to work with us on the asphalt for the playground or for the for the basketball courts and the tennis court and the okay. pickleball court um, and we're also meeting with Sebago Tech next week to do a walkthrough so we can have a concept drawn out. Um, we met with them last week, two weeks ago, maybe. Um, it was something that I had brought to James's attention because I wanted to have a concept done. And I really wanted an engineer to look at the layout of the land up there to make sure that we were doing everything right so we don't have to piecemeal things like it has been done in the past but that we're going to do it the correct way and do it once like Lucas said um, even though he's dealing with the baseball fields I'm dealing with the basketball courts the playgrounds we really need to look at the big scope and look at the vision and make sure it's done correctly um, everything that I have encountered walking in here the last year and a half is I, I can't tell you every step I've made something's broken <laughs> and it's like as soon as I think that we're going in one direction something else is gone um and you know Ian is a testament to it he has been right by my side through it all um and I couldn't be more grateful to have somebody with such um such great knowledge about how to make these things happen Okay, thank you. That's all. Yeah. Any other questions? Comments? Any other things from you, Angela? Any uh, other updates? Yeah, I do want to address the the t-shirt thing. Um, t-shirts are hard to come by right now, and I really wanted to stay local, and I really wanted to work with Devin Dukes. Um, so he's had to order from about 13 different places to get the one color that we need this summer. Um, so it is in the works. It's just going to take a little bit longer, just like everything else is. Are they on order? They are on order. <laughs> they are. Everything Thank else. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. Thank you, Angela. You're thank welcome. you, thank you, everybody else. Is we appreciate it. Is uh, it's an oh. ongoing project. We know that. So, All right. thank you. All right, moving on. Excuse me for interrupting. Oh, I apologize. Uh, at, uh, at any point, at any point moving forward, uh, um, I welcome any of you to come and visit the field uh, while I'm up there. Be happy to answer any questions discuss further while we're there um it's nicer to look at it in person while while 
we can talk about it. Um, but to Angela, to Angela's point, yeah, it might be it might be a, a diamond in the rough right now for if we can use that term. Um, but the bones are there. Everything that's essential to create this broader vision that Angela showed me of how we can use athletic services to bring a better service to the community and have it benefit benefit the greater good. It's all there. Um, the ability to serve multiple sports, tons of parking, concessions. There is no big, big, big missing piece. Um, if you had one field and no parking lot, we'd be talking about cutting down trees. But um, the space is there. The energy is there. Um, I was I was brought in when Angela said, I am on a rocket ship. I'd, I'd like you to jump on board. So that's that's exactly the type of energy that I like to bring to it. Um, so again, I encourage all of you to, to, I would love to have you up to the field, to walk you through it, to, to show you what we have seen and, and discussed, um, because I'm, I'm truly, truly excited for what this can bring, because let's not forget, I believe there's three Berwick teams right now that are headed to their representative world series sports is, I mean, I know I'm biased, but sports is cool and it can bring a lot of uh, put smiles on people's faces. Let's get let's have kids on teams on the field. Let's use our 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 fields. To me, there's nothing uh, more special than 100 cars lined up at a little league game. I think that's I think that's a great moment, and that is that is where I would like this to get to, and have it be easily maintained and be a a, a real a real key part of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can I also, can I also just make a comment too? Um, I was brought on as the director of parks and recreation to, to make changes. I was brought on and I had, I had a job that I had to, that I had to do. And that was to bring the department up to where it needs to be. And I don't live in this community. Um, but I can tell you right now that I will do everything in my power to make sure that we are doing the right thing for this community. And I know that Luke and Ian know that I feel that way. Um, I am very community minded. And again, I don't want to do what we've been doing in the past of just putting band-aids on things. I really want to do it the right way so we can see um, what Luke is seeing. You know, the the happy people, the cars lined up, you know, just, just happy families, happy teams, all of that stuff. That's what we're aiming for. And sometimes it does have to start from the bottom and come up, but we have a vision and with the team that we have, um, it's definitely going to move forward. And it has been over the last year. It just takes time to make these things happen. Yeah. All good work does. Um, it made me think about one thing when you said start from the bottom to the top. Um, what's the light situation? The, the light situation, we have um, we have 12 LED lights um, that we are going to put up there. At this point right now, we are kind of in a, a predicament. Um, our electricity that runs from one end of the field to the other end of the field um, has been buried in the ground without, um, without a conduit. And there's a break in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we can't dig up that area because we have also an irrigation system that is in that area as well. And it would cost us way too much money to dig that up. So we're looking at alternatives. Um, Roland does have every, we have everything ordered. Everything's here. We just need to make a plan of how we're going to run the electricity and do what we need to do. Um, well, and we are, are working there. on that. The lights uh, are there. We just need, the lights are there. We just need to find a way to connect them. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, light, <laughs> the lights are very old um, and they're not LED lights. Um, Ian, if you want to talk a little bit more about the lights, you're more familiar with those lights than I am. Um, that would be yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, you know, uh, great to listen to everybody's input. Um, some some great comments. And um, 
you, you know, we should always be challenged as well. So thank you to the public for challenging us. Um, you know, we, we don't get better without being challenged um, for sure. Um, and yeah, just to the point that Angela's made. Yeah, I, I was up with Angela a few weeks ago with Roland and we looked at how to site the new floodlights and, and how that would look. And I've, I've had many conversations with Musco Lighting who, you know, do a lot of uh, um, excellent flood lighting options and um, and seeing how we can adapt uh, because their costs are um, unfortunately extremely high, but they're, they're very high quality. Um, so we're, we're trying to find a way to adapt and use the town's money in the in the best way possible so that we um, so that we get the maximum, um, you know, as you guys say, bang for the buck. Um, you know, so so that's an ongoing um, part of the project. And, and yeah, I think, as Angela said, not to, you know, to labor the point too much, but the project as a whole, um, you know, if when we put our concept vision together after the feasibility study, um, you know, we, we, we saw a vision that um, we felt was right for the community, was right for the town. Uh, and yes, the concerns of, you know, the ongoing sustainability and maintenance of that, and Luke has sort of answered some of those questions excellently, um, is still a challenge. And we actually laid that out in our report that that Angela was a lone, uh, a, a lone person in most cases. And, um, you know, um, I'm pretty sure um, I have a team around me that are excellent at what they do. and you know, and, and I still get overwhelmed, um, even at that point. So imagine Angela being on her own, um, you know, it's a, it's a truly difficult situation that, that she has to deal with sometimes. And there's so many moving parts, um, that she has to, you know, account for and think about. And now, as you say, you know, um, the ideal of us being alongside Angela where we can in, in a limited fashion has helped for sure, I would say. Luke coming in has, uh, has definitely helped and, you know, we've seen that benefit already. Um, but I think that, you know, um, the, the vision that we put to the town that was generally agreed on, um, you know, we're now on and moving it forward. And we're doing the things that are going to help um, make a better facility in the long run. And we don't want to go back in history and wonder why it wasn't that way in the past. That That's for history. We can all look back at history and, and look no further than an Englishman talking to Americans about that one, for sure, because um, we know what's just gone gone on the previous weekend. But, um, but for me, let's use history in a positive way to move forward. And as Angela says, to make sure that those mistakes aren't made again. Um, I don't think you'll ever see the English invading again, put it that way. Um, so, you know, uh, with all of that in mind, it's the same principle that we're looking at with the, with the, with the, you know, memorial field and, and all of the changes we're making. And yes, there is, a, there is going to be upheaval. There was going to be unrest. There is going to be people frustrated. We understand that, but, um, you know, it, it's the means to the end and it's the end we should be looking back at looking at at the minute not how we're getting there um but uh, hopefully as i say that the town have been very supportive um including the the select board been very supportive of of where we're trying to head and move forward with this and and have backed angela and her department with finance and that's that's a really great thing in this day and age you know especially the challenges on on all budgets so but um but believe me, we're all we're all pulling together. We're all pulling the same end of the rope, and um, you know we want we all want the same thing. But um, but it's going to take a little bit of time to get there with some things. But rest assured that you know um, we'll 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 certainly achieve our goals. I'm, I'm almost sure of that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Moving on. It brings us to. Appointments, presentations, we have none. Unfinished business, we have none. We have no select uh, town manager's report because the town manager is on vacation. Uh, selectman's communications is, uh, Patty did leave this paper on my desk here, so I'll read it out. It's a public notice. There's a planning board, public hearing and site work. 
for conditional uses requested by the following is Jennifer Davis and Daniel West doing business as Mint Preventive Dental Spa. Allison Hurley, Hurley, Hurley doing business as Bad Wolf Butcher in Delhi. And Sherry Clement doing business as Primal Fit Maine. Functional fitness classes. There's a site walk is Thursday, July 21st, 2022 at 5 p.m. at 12 Sullivan Street, which is the edge across the street here. And then a public hearing will be held Thursday, July 21st, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. in this room here. All right. <clears throat> Brings us to account payable. We have account payable warrant number 79 for $194,688.47. We have accounts payable warrant number 80 for June 30th, 2022 for the amount of $112,499.04. We have a payroll warrant number 1 for July 7th, 2022 for the amount of $247,656.98. We have a payroll warrant number two for July 14th, 2022 for the amount of $87,116.72. And we have an account payable warrant number three for July 12th, 2022 for the amount of $303,237.15. And I'll make a motion that we pay our bills. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor? Four yes. We did the transfer of money. The election of the select board chair and vice chair. So we had a little bit of discussion earlier. Is um and uh, I did. is well. Is before you came in, is okay. I, was, I was asking anybody if they wanted to jump in here, and most people backed off. So I slipped this <laughs> <line>. <laughs> Well, um, is um, after talking to Noah, he's uh, said that he would like to try his hand at being chair. So I nominate Noah as chair of the select board. Do we need a second? Yeah. Oh, I, yes, I we do. A motion. <laughs> a right. motion and a second. Any discussion? Would you like to say anything, Noah? <laughs> I will serve if nominated. So, you know, that's... All right. All right. So we have a motion for Noah. Um, any other willing takers? <laughs> all right. All those, <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, <laughs> Linda just slid away a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So is, um, is congratulations. Thank you. Is, uh, and for vice chair. Do Mike or Linda, do either one of you? I wouldn't mind being the backup, Mike. I'm I'm good yielding for, for another for another year or so. You guys have a little more experience, so I nominate Linda to be the vice chair <laughs> of the select board. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. All right. Very good. You want to take over for this meeting? No, I'll let you finish. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> all, the, all the heavy lifting you have to do after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a hard one now. Is uh, We have no quick claim deeds, no abatements, second public comment, everybody left. We have no executive session, other business or non-agenda items. Um, I, I actually have one. Yep. I just want to follow up to the earlier with, um, with the rec director. Um, uh, obviously someone coming here they had a concern but from what we hear from her and from what we know is there's been a lot of planning it just hasn't budget timing and all of that has had to take place and I fully support the fact that we got to do the bones first it can't just be the quick band-aid um, my only suggestion might be um, because as we've seen with the edge, people drive by, they don't see any progress, so they don't think we're doing anything when we are. Same thing, is is there, and maybe there is and I just don't know, on the website, is there like a public board or something yeah, like so we could do weekly updates? I mean, I could talk to us a little bit and, and maybe that's a good part to put it, but if we look at the feasibility study and what that plan really is, and I remember yeah. sitting here with Steve last year and talking about the money and how that's planned out, 
they're actually right on, on target, target with yes, what thank is you. planned out when it is. Exactly. 2022 and 2023, so even next year, are the two big, big moving years. Right. And maybe just now that things are happening, Maybe that's a good suggestion where we just kind of keep updating that where this is where we are. But they are I mean, I, don't, I know you're in the middle of camp. They're definitely right where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I know, know. You're, I know you're in the middle of camp, and I know you have a position out there that you're hoping to fill that will help with that. Um, but once you get that filled, if there was, you know, some way that they could maybe do a week or biweekly, you know, well, every other week, just kind of an update. You know, and hey, things are still going. Hey, we had a site. I, I will. I will say. I will say that you know, as Terry and BCM, she goes up there mm -hmm. almost weekly to videotape the changes and puts them up. You know, oh. so they are on. They are up there. That people just have to find them. You know, she, and that maybe that's all we need to do is put it on the rec page. If you want to see, if you want to see the the changes, check out the BCM link, yeah. and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that's a question for Terry too. Just, yeah, just maybe Terry can do that. So. Once we have somebody hired in here, my plan is to be able to focus more on the bigger projects. Um, and just so we can keep people updated on stuff like that. And hopefully our admin and programmer can really take a hold of the, the program aspects of things. And I can really focus on the policies, the procedures, and to get everything really narrowed down to where, um, to pretty much where the goal was for me to get to when I was hired. You know, when I was hired, Steve made it very clear to me that I had a lot on my plate. Yes, we yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> I was there talking to you yeah. about it. <laughs> Asking you if you were up for the challenge and you said yeah. yes and you seem to be I, I, I did. you are. Yeah. I have I, I have no problem yeah. with what you were doing, doing. And it's like Luke says, you know, uh, Luke, I'm gonna take your rocket ship. You know, yeah. we yeah. have, as soon as I've gotten here, we've been hitting the ground running and we haven't stopped. And, um, and I'm thankful to have, you know, the advisory that I do have and the resources that I do have. Um, I wish that people would reach out to me and talk to me and ask me questions instead of assuming things, because if they did, they would know where we're at. Um that's a, that's a common, it, common problem. With a lot yeah. of <laughs> yeah. it is up on our website, the feasibility study is on our website. It, you know, all that information is on our website. Um, and it, I'm okay with people calling and asking me if people are like, you know, God bless George Tasker. He came in last week and, you know, we sat down and we talked about different things that needed to happen. And I really appreciated his feedback. And he understood where I was coming from. And he had questions that were answered. Um, and, you know, if we could all just reach out instead of assume, um, you know, my, my door is always open. And I'm more than happy to answer the questions if they're brought to my attention. I don't think anybody on the board is dissatisfied with your work. I mean, we know that you were coming into a mountain, you know, and, and, and despite the fact that we had essentially an entire meeting tonight that was centered around Parks and Rec, there are people that complained about it that are not going to watch this meeting, that are not going to care about the, the information was put out there, and, you know, it's on them. It's, it's, not, it's not your fault that they don't, they're not going to go search for the answers. You know, it's just, you know, they, they complain and, you know, we should try to respond as best we can, but they're still, no matter how much we put out there, they're still going to yeah, have right. questions and problems and they're, they're not going to come to the meetings and they're not going to mm -hmm. watch the meetings and find out the answers that they actually want. Yeah. Well, okay. and I can tell you from, as a professional, if I don't know how to get something done, I will reach out to my network and my resources to find out how to get it done. Um, this is why we have Ian here. This is why we have Luke here. This is why we have Jack here. Um, and I will do what it takes to find find the answer if I don't have the answer. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Any other? Thank you, guys. Well, none? Nope. I move that we <laughs> conclude the meeting. We adjourn. All those Something. in favor? Say <laughs> aye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.